Sam Cobley, and I have a horrible feeling this lesson will be quite long. Um, this is me fulfilling a request from Diego CL on the comments from my last video, the Still Feel Like Your Man cover, who requested that I did a lesson on Out of My Mind, the Where the Light Is Tall version, uh, by John Mayer or the John Mayer Trio. I've not seen an accurate tab, cover, or lesson of this, and I'm sorry if I've missed yours, but I have had a look myself, and I've not found anything that's exactly right. There's some incredibly talented players, but if you really want to recreate the riffs, or even just learn the riffs for your own use in a, in a standard 12-bar blues, in the key of D in this case anyway, then this will be the lesson for you. I've tabbed it out, as usual, handwritten. It's in the link in the description. I've tried to replicate 99.9% .9 of any grace notes, inflictions, even mistakes that happened in the original performance. I may have missed a couple because there are lots of notes. And you'll find that a lot of these... Uh, licks are extremely hard to replicate actually because there's a different way to play when you're improvising and there are notes that you probably wouldn't intend to hit but but that end up getting sounded out. Um, but I have included all those so if you want to really study these licks then you can learn them for yourself here. I've split it up into lots of riffs, um, 16 riffs in total, just so you can take it in more bite-sized portions. And what I'm going to do with the full song, today we're learning the intro of it. This is the first 2 minutes and 50 something seconds of the song, just before the singing kicks in. I'll make another video on the uh, licks that are the call and response parts of the singing, and I'll also make another lesson in the future uh, for the solo slash outro. So we're tackling it in three stages. It's quite a long one this one, it's uh, 10 minutes worth of transcribing that I need to do at some point, so that'll be fun. Quick notes on settings as usual. Um, I am running straight into my amp today, this is a Victory Sheriff 44. My pedal board is at the rehearsal room, so no pedals. I would probably use a, a mid-rangey boost, like a tube screamer. Probably would have a bit of compression. I don't have that choice today. So I'm on the low power mode, which offers a bit of compression. I have quite a bit of gain and not that much volume. I'll show you what it sounds like if I just strum out an A chord. So quite mid-range heavy, quite driven. Um, Importantly, I have rolled down the volume a little bit on the Strat. I tend to do this when I'm covering John Mayer songs because there's just that little bit of treble that gets taken off. And I've also rolled down the neck pickup tone control about quarter turn. We're on the neck pickup. <laughs> Riff one. So to get kicked off, we start off with a kind of major pentatonic shape. We start on the 12th fret on the A string with our little finger. Play that, then the 9th fret on the D string, up to the 12th fret on the D string. Okay, the next note, uh, there's only one note that's really audible, but I can hear the chord tones, and actually you can see the back of his hand on the performance, so I, I believe it's this slide, which not many people do. Uh, it's a, a small chord that we're sliding up here. Um, the 9th fret on the D string, and the 10th fret on the G string, and we're sliding that up to the 10th and 11th frets, respectively. So like this. So, so far we have 12, 9, 12, 9 and 10, up to up 10 and 11. And here on the tab I've written a small rake. It's not necessary, but I've seen it in some performances. Uh, I don't know whether it's in this one, I've always played it, so... The important note is the 12th fret on the A string that we land on. If you want to add that little optional rake in, what uh, a rake is, is that we're basically doing a kind of sweep pick motion. We're, we're, we're not stopping on any of the strings and we're not individually picking them, we're just dragging our pick, in this case, up the strings. Um, but we're kind of, we're blocking off the, um, the strings with our left hand so that we're not getting a particular tone. We're just playing basically X, X, and then off around the A string. So that would sound like this. That 12th fret we need to add a nice bit of vibrato and hold that note. Riff 2 goes like this. It's a bit harder this one. Okay, I didn't play that great. Uh, it's, it is written out right if I didn't play that right, sorry. Um, Starts off with a full tone bend on the 13th fret on the B string. And rhythmically, 
that is one of two notes that goes on for a bit longer than the rest. That is about as close as we can get rhythmically, and you'll find that a lot in this. Because it's improvised, mainly, you're not going to get accurate rhythms, I'm afraid. So, 13th fret, full tone bend, hold it there for a second. Next bit, we're playing the 10th fret on the B string, and then the 13th fret on the B string. So. And then we're playing those same two frets, but as a pull-off and uh, a hammer-on and pull-off sequence, so 10, 13, 10. Down to the 12th fret on the G string, back up to the 10th fret on the B string, and then a pull-off 12 to 10 on the G string, 12 on the D string, this is the hard bit, going straight up to the 12th fret on the G string, back up to the 10th fret on the B string. So. So when I said the hard bit is going from the 12th fret to the 12th fret, it doesn't sound hard, but what we're doing is playing the 12th fret on the D string with our third finger, and then I'm kind of flattening down that finger while sort of blocking the D string from making any more sound, because we don't want this going on, we want the notes to be separate. But what we've got to try and do is move from this string to this string. It's just something that I find hard, maybe you won't. Um, that's as we're coming back up to the strings to that um, B string 10th fret that we just landed on there. So the second of the two notes that goes on for a bit longer than the rest is this next one. It's a 10th fret on the G string, and we're kind of doing a quarter tone bend. Just like that. Like I say, it hangs on this note for a bit longer. I'll add that to the rest that we've just done, and I'll play it slowly and quickly. And the next little part, again, it's all full speed ahead now. It's quite tricky. Starts off on the D string on the 12th fret, pulling off to the 10th. And lands on the 12th fret on the A string. And now here is the kind of important part. Uh, so on the A string, we're sliding down just a little bit from about the 11th fret to the 10th fret on the A string. And then hammering onto the 11th and pulling off back to the 10th. Playing the 13th on the E string, a little finger, up to the 10th on the A string, same again. And then 13 on the E string, 10 on the E string this time. Go up the octave to the 12th fret on the D string. And the last little bit, we're doing a little bar on the G and B strings on the 10th fret and hammering on to the 11th fret on the G string. It's kind of a, a minor major turnaround. The last little note that you can just about hear is a hammer on from nowhere to the 9th fret on the D string and a slide down. I know I've gone through that quickly, so I'll play it all very slowly now so you get it and I'll go into more detail on the parts. So the hard part, like I said, is, is sliding down to that 10th fret with the hammer-ons to the 11th. And then the next bit, it's just a case of muting the strings well enough. So that 13 to 10 pattern, all I'm trying to make sure that I'm doing is that when I play the 13th fret, I'm deliberately leaving my little finger, covering the A string a little bit so we don't hear. I'm strumming both strings there, but you can't hear the A string. And same again when I play the 10th fret on the A string, I'm letting the top of my finger block off that E string. It just gets it as clean as possible. When I go up the octave to the 12th fret on the D string, I'm really digging into that string. Uh, so I'm actually blocking off all other strings. So I can dig into that one a bit more. Uh, the next part, if you can't really do the hammer on from nowhere, uh, what I would do is after that little ma uh, minor major hammer on thing on the 10th and 11th frets, I'd play that as a down stroke and I'd come upwards and catch that 9th fret as I play that. So like this. Like that. And that's going to get the best sound out of that lick for you. It's incredibly hard that one and I've still not mastered it as you can tell, but we're getting there. 
So let me first say, no, I'm joking. Uh, this is the uh, riff three after he says, LA went nuts. Uh, it goes like this. <laughs> Okay, this one's not hard in terms of speed, but it's very technically difficult and we need to get used to our bends really well and we need to be accurate with those. So, it's pretty much all on the B string. We're gonna do a, a full tone bend on the 13th fret. Then play the 10 and play the 13. Then what we're gonna do is pre-bend the 13th fret so it sounds like the 15th fret and release it to the 13th. So. And then play the 10th fret, and then the 13th fret again. Then what we're doing here is pre-bending the 13th fret up to the 15th again, and we're just playing it at the top this time of the bend, so we're not releasing it. So. We're then immediately releasing our fingers whilst um, blocking the strings off so we don't hear ourselves coming down from that bend. We're bending the 13th fret back up to that 15th fret that we just left it on. So. And then a typical mayorism coming up next. We start on the 10th fret on the E string and extremely quickly uh, pull off 13 to 10 on the B string. It's a really common thing. You'll find it a lot in, in this song and in other songs um, by John Mayer too. So all together slowly. This one I actually kind of go away from using one finger per fret and I tend to just use my third finger because I find it easier to do bends with. Uh, if you want to be extremely proper about your technique, you would probably use your um, fourth finger for the 13th frets. Riff four, interesting one this, and I'm gonna not play it as many times as it should be, I'm almost sure, but I'll, I've, it's written out exactly how it's played. I can't count while I'm playing. It goes like this. <laughs> Okay, so it starts with a little uh, pre-bend release thing on the 12th fret on the G string. We're bending it to sound like the 13th fret. And releasing it slowly to the 12th fret. Then I've written a note and a little asterisk. It says, all 10th frets very slightly bent towards the, ba uh, the bass string. Sorry. What I'm going to do here, rather than just 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12, 10, 12 it sounds fine. On the original recording, you can actually hear that he's going... Which, I don't know if you can tell that difference on the uh, recording, but what we're doing is we're pushing our first finger up towards the, uh, the D and A strings extremely slightly. It's probably not even enough to call it a quarter note bend. We're literally... Just that difference. But it just gives it a bit more kind of character. Rhythmically, we're not really. It starts a bit slower and ends a bit faster. I think it plays 10, 12, like 15 times. Again, it's written out correctly. I probably did it a bit early then. Uh, so that's just 10, 12. Make sure that when we play the 12th fret, we're flattening our finger rather than uh, pushing that one up because otherwise it just all sounds out of tune and you don't get that character. It just sounds like you're playing it wrong. So then when it does the next part, which is a kind of bend and pull off sequence, it's on the 12th fret on the G string and we're doing a full tone bend. Then pulling off 12 to 10 and landing on 12 to 12 on the D string. The next little part, again another little mayorism, it's actually pretty much the same as we did earlier with the... Uh, but this time we're going on the 10th fret with a little quarter note bend on the G string. And then 12 10 pull off on the D string, 12 10 pull off on the A string. And you'll find that I'm really, really lightly picking those, if at all. I could probably do it without actually picking at all. Uh, so, those two bits slowly. Next little bit, uh, after a, a short second of rest, starts off as a 10th fret on the A and D string, so bar chord thing. Um, hammer onto the 12th fret on the A string. That D string you can barely hear it but it is there. And then what we're going to do here is descend down the blues scale. So the 11th fret on the A string, 
10th fret on the A string, 13th on the E string, 10th fret on the E string, and then up the octave onto the 12th fret on the D string. Now, what you can hear in the video is that he actually pulls off at the very last second to the 10th fret on the D string, which uh, is like the dominant 7th of that D chord. Uh, so, what we've got here is... Okay, so it's, it's all a bit messy how it's played anyway. But, yeah, so we, we've done our hammer on. 11, 10, 13, 10, 12, 10. Okay, with five, tricky this. Um, I had a look in the past at uh, Every Day I Have the Blues, which has this basically throughout the whole song, which is why I'm okay at it. There's a lot of rakes or, or that kind of sweet picky technique that we were talking about earlier. It's not easy. I'll play, I'll play you riff five now. <laughs> So the main part, really, rhythmically, is this. Those are the important notes. But, because it's John Mayer, it's very difficult. Uh, we're starting off with a little hammer-on from the 10th to the 12th fret. We're going to bar the 10th fret on the B and E strings, and hammer-on to the 12th fret on the B string. Okay? And then your rake pattern is basically the same for each chord. We pull off to the 10th fret on the B string in this case, and then basically drag our pick down from the B string to roughly the D string. Uh, we're blocking off those strings so you can't really hear them, so. And end on the 12th fret on the D string. Like that. So what I'm doing is I'm digging in on the way down, um, on the way down on the hammer on, and we're pulling up for the rake, landed on that 12th fret in this case. We're going to do the same kind of thing, but on the 10th fret on the G and B strings, hammer on for the 11th fret on the G string. Uh, this time we're coming down the G and D strings and landing on the 12th fret on the A string. Okay, so with that first bit slowly. Again, it's a bit of a weird technique. What you've basically got to keep doing. That's the technique that we're trying to get. Uh, the last little one is a bit less of a uh, rake thing, but it's hard, this bit. So, 10th fret uh, to the 12th fret on the D string. Uh, and same kind of rhythm, but there's no kind of bar chord this time. It's just 10 to 12. Pull off to the 10th fret. And then we're going to come down 12, 10 on the A string. And then we're sliding down, this, this is where it gets a bit messy by the way, we're not really intentionally hitting lots of these notes. Slide down to the 8th fret on the A string. So. And then up to the 9th fret, that's a slide still, so. 9, 12 on the A string, and 10 on the D string. For me this tends to land on my middle finger, finger number 2. So, I think I find quite often that I hammer onto that 12th fret as well, I don't think he does, but I do. So, um, all together slowly. And then you'll see that I've got a little slide um, down to nothing and from nothing as well. Uh, I think you can sort of hear a bit of a, a, a riff six goes like this. Great. Uh, okay, so it starts off on the fifteenth fret on the B string, but just before that, we basically sort of accidentally—it's almost like he's trying to play the sixteenth um, fret on the G string. He doesn't quite hit it, so you get a. We play that 15th fret three times, so. Like that. Um, and then on the B string, bend the 17th fret a whole tone. 
And then 15, 17. Then we're pulling off 17 to 15 on the B string. 17 on the G string. Then playing 15, 17. And then this time, 15 to 17 to 15, hammer on pull off. Land on the 17th fret on the G string. So far we've got this. Back up to the 15th fret on the B string. And then a bit of a weird one now, 17th fret on the G string. Uh, we're bending up a full tone and releasing it. And then land on the 14th fret twice. So. Now from here, what I've written is, after that 14th fret the second time, we'd sort of hammer on to the 17th fret on the G string, and bend up to the 19th fret slowly. You then play the bend at the top of, um, you play that string at the top of the bend, sorry, uh, one last time. And then, trick you on, get your fingers right underneath it, and finish off the bend all the way up to roughly like the 22nd fret or something mad like that. It's, two, it's a two and a half tone bend. So, like that, okay? So, um, like that. And it's supposed to sound messy at the top. At least I'm saying that uh, because I'm playing it like that. Uh, that's the uh, riff six, though. Riff seven. Okay, uh, it's not too bad, this one. Uh, we're going to start off in a kind of... Think of it as a minor pentatonic shape. It'll be easier that way, uh, for the first part, anyway. We're going to start off on the 14th and 15th frets on the G and B strings. I'm using my third and fourth fingers for that. Uh, and then we're going down to the 12th fret as a bar chord on the G and B strings. Then on the D string we're doing 15, 12. And then again it's a bit of a mayorism as I keep saying. Uh, it's just, it sort of touches the 15th fret on the D string. And then with our first finger slide 12 to 10 on the A string. So, slowly. But again, I'm sort of hitting downwards on the 15th fret on the D string, and then upwards just to catch that 12th fret so I get the slide and it kind of fades out if you like. Riff 8 um, goes like this. Great, I like this one. Um, so, you're very lightly basically doing the first intro part, so 12, 9, 12, and then the little chord slide up. You barely hear the chord this time though, you really just hear the, uh, the higher note, the 10 to 11. But, we're still going to play it, um, but really I'm brushing the strings with the pick and barely touching them. And then, this is a nice bit to get right, uh, 12 fret on the D string. 10th uh, fret on the G string, and it's a quarter note bend, and then landing on the 12th fret on the D string. You're then going to do that typical thing that we keep doing, a little pull off to the 10th fret on the D string, and then pull off 12, 11, 10 on the A string, and slide down. numbered the riffs, so sorry. This is riff 8 number 2, uh, it's supposed to be riff 9, but don't get confused. The next bit of riff 8 uh, goes like this. And again, it's really tricky to, to feel like you're playing this right, but it, the notes are there. So we're doing that same kind of rake thing that we've been doing a couple of times, but this time you can hear the actual chord notes in it. So we're barring the 10th fret on the B and the E strings, and what we actually need to do here is basically more of a sweep pick. So what I'm doing is I'm sort of rolling my first finger. So I'm pressing down on the bottom string, but not on the uh, B string fully. And then as I move my pick upwards, I'm shifting the weight to the B string there. 
and landed on the 12th fret on the G string. Uh, if you're as bad of a metal player as me, uh, that is about the most sweet picking you'll get out of, out of your guitar playing, but uh, there are people that will find that extremely easy, and there are people that will find it very difficult. Um, you're then going to do the same kind of rundown that we've done quite a lot in this song already. So 10 on the G string, and then 12, 10 on the D string, 12, 10 on the A string. Okay, so... And slide down. At the bottom of that slide, so around this kind of area of the fretboard, we're then going to slide up to the 9th fret on the A string. So what I do at the bottom of the slide, because I've landed on my first finger on that 10th fret and slid down, I swap to my third finger to slide back up to the 9th, because we're in kind of a new box now, around the 9th fret. Um, so you end up on that 9th fret on the A string, you go to the 7th fret on the G string, 9th fret on the D string, back up to the 7th fret. And you can just about hear this in the background, you hammer on, same kind of shape that you did up here a second ago. Uh, but this time it's on the 10, uh, the 9th sorry, and 10th frets on the D and G strings. And I'm kind of hammering on from the, uh, that 7th fret uh, with my 3rd and 4th fingers. So 9, 10, and just slide down from there. Again, it's, it's, it's really low in the mix, or it's you know, played like that. So, that part slowly goes like this. And that is riff 8 2. <laughs> riff 9. Um, now, this stage in the song, we're putting down our uh, plectrum, pick, whatever you want to call it, uh, or throw it away if you jump it at the way the light is tall. And this, lots of people think isn't important. I personally think it is. One, because riff 12 is much easier with your fingers once you get used to that finger picking style. But well, two, because you'll see us this interesting technique of basically sort of pressing the string downwards. And when people say the tone is in the fingers, it doesn't mean that you have to have gifted fingers. It means that they literally have a different tone to them than a pick. You get a different type of attack. So, riff nine, uh, same, same little note that we had earlier. All 10 frets very slightly bent towards the bass strings. Same as earlier. But this time, I'm blocking off these top three strings with my uh, thumb. So the D, A and E strings should all not make a sound. And I'm blocking off the B and E strings with my uh, second and third fingers. So, if you were to strum all the strings, it's only the G string that you hear. And what I'm doing is I'm sort of digging into these strings, so I'm pressing downwards and releasing rather than nicely finger picking them. And I'm doing that same it, slightly less times than earlier. One, two, three, four, five times. And then we're doing kind of the same bend. 12th fret, full tone. Pull off 12 to 10. Land on the 12th fret on the D string. And then play 10 on the G string and 9 on the D string. So slowly that sounds like this. Riff 10. So this riff, we're still using our fingers for it, and this time we're kind of pulling up the string uh, to get a really harsh attack, sorry about that. Um, 13th fret up to 15th slide on the B string, and then play the 15th fret again. There's loads of vibrato here as well. You then carelessly slide down to the 13th fret and pull off to the 10th fret. Then play the 10th fret twice. Play the 13th and the 15th. And then we're doing four grace note hammer-ons, so really quick hammer-ons, from the 13th fret to the 15th fret on the B string. So slowly so far we've got... Then we're going to shift our box. So lots of people would think that we're doing this with our first finger. We're not. We're going to use our third finger so all our 
um, firmly in the right position now. So the 12th fret, um, we're going to slide roughly down from the 13th fret to the 12th on the uh, G string. And we're going to do this three times. And then pull off to the 10th fret on the G string. So, uh, 12th fret on the D string. 13th fret with your little finger on the B string. Then 12th fret on the G string, same slide once more. And then play 12 twice. Uh, 10th fret, uh, full tone bend. Uh, 12th fret twice on the D string. And then 10 to 11, hammer on and slide down on the G string. So slowly that last bit goes like this. And there we have it. Uh, still use your fingers for riff 11. This one goes like this. should be anyway, I have not turned it up yet, but should be. Heavy vibrato I've got written in big letters. Uh, so we're starting off 15 to 12, pull off on the B string. I prefer to use my third finger, don't know why, I just feel like I get better vibrato with it. So, uh, rhythmically it's, we're holding the 15th fret for a bit longer than the 12th fret. Uh, we're going to do that three times. And then play the 15th fret on its own with loads of wobbling about four times. And these bends are very tricky to get accurate. So, with your first finger, and I say that because you don't want to get too much power into this bend, you want it to take a bit of effort. First finger, 13th fret on the E string, uh, quarter note bend, just to lead us up to the 14th fret where we're going to do a half tone bend, so reaching for that 15th fret for that sound. So. And then come off to the 13th fret on the E string, uh, and then to the 15th fret on the B string. And pull off just at the very end to the 12th fret on the B string. So. You'll notice as soon as I take my thumb off, I get ringing from the other strings. I'm trying to keep all of the strings covered apart from the one that I need. So. Then, uh, some more tricky bends. 15th fret, full tone bend on the E string. Half tone bend on the 14th fret. 13 on the E string without a bend. Play the 15th fret on the B string twice. Back up to the 13th fret quarter note bend. That was on the E string. So. Then 15th fret twice on the B string. 13th fret quarter note, bend on the E string. Then we're into that part again that's... Like that. 13 to 15 on the E string lots of times. Again, it's written exactly in the, in the tab. Don't know how many times I'm playing it here. Uh, we release that eventually by playing a full tone bend on the 15th fret. And then... Oops, sorry about the noise. Uh, then E string 15 to 13 pull off and land on the 15th fret on the B string twice. So, okay, so the reason why I put riff 12 as a separate riff, um, even though it kind of leads very much into riff 11, is because I think this is really tricky. So try and learn this separately. We're still using our fingers, and I'm going to roll the volume up here because I should have known it before riff 11. It goes like this. up the end of a bit there, uh, but <laughs> close enough. Uh, it starts off leading from riff 11, uh, so at the end of that we're going uh, So that's just a little sort of hammer on from nowhere and slide down to the 12th fret on the G string. Uh, that's just the first note of riff 12, but then it goes into this. Um, 13th fret to a 10th fret pull off on the B string, and we're leaving it on the 13th fret for a bit longer than the 10th. So, 
and then on the G string, slide down roughly from the 13th fret to the 12th fret, uh, and pull off to the 10th fret. So, and then 12, 10 on the D string, then 12, 10 on the A string, those are both pull offs, and slide down if you can fit that in if you've got enough time. Um, so, You'll notice throughout this that I try to, anyway, play the 13th fret on the B string with my little finger. And you'll see why in a bit. We need our third finger to do the other part, basically. Uh, we need that one free. So, you do that again. And again. And this time is a bit different. We get halfway there and then do another one. So, 13 to 10. 13, 12, 10. And then straight back up to basically start the sequence again. 13, 10 on the B string. This time on the G string, we're going to do a 12th fret half tone bend up and down, and then pull off to the 10th fret. And play the 12th fret on the D string. So that part slowly is like this. Then the same kind of thing again. Uh, so another half riff, 13, 10, 12, bend, pull off to the 10th fret. Then this time it's where it goes with the high note. 13, 10. This is where we need our little finger. 13 on the E string this time. And then our third finger needs to be straight away ready to slide down. 13, 12, 10 on the G string. And then this riff's a bit different now. It goes 12 on the D string. 10 on the G string. 12, 10 pull off on the D string. 12 on the A string. Pulling off to the 10th. Uh, yeah, pulling off to the 10th fret. Doing a little half tone bend and release. And land on the 13th fret on the E string. I've gone through that quickly again. I'll play it slowly now. The second half of that slowly again is this. This is tricky, by the way, really tricky. <laughs> um, 12th fret on the D string we're going straight back up to. We're going straight back up to the D string on the 12th fret. Then a quarter note bend on the 10th fret on the G string. And then 12 to 10 pull off on the D string. So slowly all the way through. Uh, I'll start from the third time we do the full riff. So sort of the second line of tab if you read in my sheet. It goes like this. Okay. Um, here is where the drums are playing a bit louder, and you see John Mayer reach for his pick. So we've got our plectrum back now, volume's fully up on the guitar, and we're at riff 13. <laughs> So, on the E string, we're sliding up to, uh, from the 12th to the 14th, playing the 12th fret, and then B string, 14 to 12, pull off, 15, 12 on the G string, and as we're letting that 12th fret ring on the G string, we play the 12th fret on the E string. And again, as with all of these riffs, you can slide down a bit from there. That's riff 13. I've kept that one short just because it's a really nice part. You can use that in quite a lot because you can use those, um, those little intervals quite a lot. Um, riff 14. Because this one starts with quite a nice repeating pattern on the 10th fret on the B string. You just play that once. And then do a slow bend on the 13th fret, a whole tone on the B string. Which is matching that 15th fret, which is also the 10th fret on the E string. So we're, we're sort of gradually getting up to the same sound of the 10th fret on the E string. And just before we do reach that sound, we're playing the 10th fret on the E string. So you do that twice. And then one last time, but we're ready to play the next bit. So 12 on the E string. And then we're extremely quickly going to play the 12th fret again, but pull off to the 11th and then to the 10th. This is one of those where it could be a mistake, but it's there, so I'll teach it. Uh, so. Th 
13th fret on the B string, then 10th fret picked on the B string, 10th fret on the E string, 13th to 10 on the B string, picked both of them, and then it's kind of uh, what I think anyway is a, a slide or pull off pattern. So 13, 12, 10, back up to 12 on the G string. As we get to that 12 for the last time, we're going to bend up a full tone. So, so with the first bit. And the 10th fret on the B string. So all together. Uh, riff 15 goes like this. string 10 10 and then 13 fret full tone bend it's basically the same as we've just done and end on the 10th fret on the E string well then straight away we're going to shift our weight on our first finger to the um, 10th fret on the B string and we're going to release a sort of half note bend so we're pre-bending that uh, so it sounds like 11 to 10 so Like that. Landed on the 12th fret on the G string. So. And then we're going to pre bend that 12th fret on the G string. Play it at the top. It sounds like the 14th fret. And go down to the 10th fret on the G string. So we go. Then we're going to shift our box down to the um, 9th fret on the, well, on all of the strings now. Uh, so we're, we're doing a half tone pre-bend on the G string, uh, 9th fret to 10th fret. I'm playing the 7th fret on the G string. Doing the same on the D string. Nearly the same on the A string. We start off with the same pre-bend release thing. So, uh, like that. I landed on the 10th fret this time on the E string. I use my little finger. So, all the bends together go like this. Slide all the way down, and as earlier, we're going to swap our fingers now. I use my middle finger now. So we're at the bottom of this slide, we're going to slide back up to the eighth fret on the A string, and hammer onto the ninth fret, and go up to the seventh fret on the D string. So. third finger, slide up to the 10th fret on the D string, and play the 7th fret on the G string, and then with our middle finger slide up to the 11th fret on the G string, 10th fret on the E string this time, so. Play the 13th fret full tone bend on the B string. That same kind of May rhythm that I keep talking about earlier, which was uh, 10 on the E string and then 13, 10 pull off on the B string. So, play the 10th fret on its own. Same thing again, so the bend and then the um, little pull off sequence. Same again, 10 play on its own. And this time just do a full tone bend on the 13th fret and then play the 10th fret on the E string. Same again, 10. 13 bend, and 10, 10, 10 on the E string. I'll play it all really slowly because I know I've gone through that quite quickly. It goes like this. on that last 10th fret on the E string. 
Then, a nice little part just to lead us into the very last bit. Full tone bend, 13th fret on the E string. 10th fret on the E string. Uh, a pre-bent note on the 13th fret on the B string. Uh, a full tone one. Release it. And play the 10th fret twice on the B string. So slowly, the last bit. And we're on to riff 16 and the end uh, of the intro anyway. Riff 16. Same kind of rake part as earlier on riff 5. In fact, it's exactly the same to start with. So 10 on the B string and E string. Hammering onto the 12th fret on the B string. Uh, pulling off to the 10th fret and kind of breaking downwards or upwards. Uh, Lands on the 12th fret on the D string. Then we're going to do the same as earlier. 10th fret on the G and B strings. Hammering onto the 11th fret on the G string. Uh, pull off to the 10th. Break down to the 12th on the E string. So. And then on the A string, play 10, 12, 10, and then slide from the 8th fret to the 9th fret on the A string. That last bit should be quite soft, dynamic wise, anyway. So. video hasn't been too long but I wanted to go in detail um, to it. You may have noticed I am still not at the stage where I can just play all this together without mistakes all, all in one go. I'll be honest I've done it once or twice but realistically there's a lot to look at and it's quite tricky. There are lots of notes that you can easily miss or that your picking technique won't cover very well but like I say this is improvised so although it's incredible how it's played and how, how good it sounds considering it's improvised um, there are some notes that you wouldn't really do if you're writing um, a song. So I hope you enjoyed. Please do subscribe if you enjoyed it because there will be the next part of the song coming as soon as I can write it all out and learn it and record it. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.